Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and let's build a garden. Last year we planted some grapes and berry bushes, but clearly they could use an upgrade. So this spring I dug, pun intended, into a fenced garden build. I shared how I built the simple arbors for the entrance to this garden in my last video, so if you haven't seen it, head over and check it out. But for this video, I'm going to pick up where that left off and build the rest of the fencing. This is a pretty big project, so I'll try to cover everything, but I've also provided the printable building plans in the video description below with more details. First, I placed these arbors between my three grapevines. Since I was attaching fence framing to everything, I didn't anchor these in place, but I did use a little paver sand to help level them. There's always potential for cedar posts to rot over time if they're in direct contact with the ground, but this area drains pretty well and I'm hoping that the paver sand will help too. But I can always repair or replace later if needed. I'm not overly concerned. To keep things straight, I used a couple of stakes in the ground and pulled a string between them to help line up the arbors. I cut a piece of 2x4 to 5 foot long and used it to space these arbors 5 foot apart. Then I pulled the posts so that they were just touching the string. I drilled pocket holes into the ends of this 2x4 and secured it between the arbors at the bottom using exterior pocket hole screws. Then I did the same with another 2x4 about halfway up the posts. On the arbors, I ran the bottom 2x4s vertically and the middle 2x4s horizontally. So I did the same for the fencing so that it matched. Once the middle section of fence framing was secured between the arbors, I set the front two corner posts. I measured five foot from the arbors on each side and used a post hole digger to dig holes in line with my string. Again, I wanted to make sure that everything stayed straight across the front, so the string was vital. I dug these 24 inches deep, and I hate digging post holes. I'm very slow at it, so I didn't waste room on my SD card to film the whole process, but you get the idea. I cut my 4x4 posts to 7 foot long so that they would go into the ground about 2 feet and stick out 5 feet. And I used concrete to set the posts. I made sure that they were plumb vertically before adding too much concrete in the holes so that I could adjust if I needed to. You'll notice that I used treated wood for the fence framing here and that's because it's way cheaper than cedar. I just used cedar for the arbors. Now, although I measured these roughly five foot from the arbors, there's no way to get these posts set perfectly at that distance, at least not for me. So once they were set, I cut to fit two by fours between them and the arbors. I installed these along the bottom using pocket holes and exterior pocket hole screws. I knew the ground here wasn't perfectly level and it really didn't need to be, but I did want to make sure that these pieces stayed straight and didn't look wavy. So I used this string to help me make sure that the board stayed straight across the top. Then I cut to fit and installed the top 2x4s so that they were all at the same height as the one in the middle. Again, these may not be level, but I tried to keep them straight. This front section of the project was actually part of a sponsored campaign that I was doing on Instagram. So I'm doing things a little out of order here since I had to completely finish the front section before moving on to the sides and back. So I cut two by twos to line these open spaces between the four by fours and the two by fours. Just like with the Arbor, I installed these so that I could staple the wire fencing to it later. You could do without them, but they do kind of add an extra detail. Once the 2x2s were on, I cut to fit welded wire fencing panels over these sections using wire cutters. Then I stapled these onto the back side of the 2x2s. Now, since I was completely finishing the front before moving on, I went ahead and added a weed barrier fabric over my grapevines and then cut cedar fence pickets to create raised beds around them. But I don't really recommend adding the raised beds until after all the fencing is up. So this part is kind of out of order, but I did have a good reason. <laughs> 
After this front section was complete and my sponsored stuff was turned in, Danny tilled up the rest of the area so that the grass would be gone, at least for now. The rest of the fence framing is pretty much the same as the front. I measured the sides about 14 foot deep and made the back the same length as the front. I measured this out and then used some scrap wood stakes to mark the two back corners. I dug those post holes first and installed the back corner posts just like the front corners. Then I pulled a string to go around all the corners and added another post in the center of the short sides and two posts evenly spaced along the back side. I was in the zone the day that I dug these holes and honestly, I just started working and completely forgot to press record on the camera. Sometimes you have that. So I didn't get footage of all of the posts, but they're basically the same. Measure, pull the string, dig the hole, set the post. This is a pretty forgiving project in that the measurements don't have to be exact and the posts don't have to be perfect. If they look straight, they're straight. The main thing is that you just don't get your posts going totally zigzaggy. Once the six posts around the sides were set, I repeated the same process as on the front to add the framing. I cut to fit the two by fours at the bottom and then another at the top. I secured the two by fours to the four by four posts again, trying to keep them straight, but not necessarily level. There's a lot of the same thing going on here, so I didn't film the whole thing, but basically I screwed in all of the two by fours around the bottom. I cut to fit them between the posts and then I screwed them in like with two and a half inch decking screws. I just like drove them at an angle. I didn't use pocket holes. I did use pocket holes in some of them, but I was running out of screws. So I just toenailed them um, the rest of the way. And now I'm using pocket hole screws for the top pieces. Don't want to lose that. For the top pieces around where like the top of the railing is going to be. Hey. It would be nice to have an extra set of hands for these top pieces, but I found my head a helpful resource in a pinch. Danny did offer to help, but I knew that he was working on his own projects and chores around the yard, and I knew that I could manage alone, so I didn't take him up on the offer. But he did help me on the very last piece. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> Once all the 2x4s were up, I lined the sides and the top of each open section again with 2x2s cut to fit. I just cut each of these pieces and secured using 2.5 inch decking screws. And then at some point I got distracted and glued on the fence caps, and then I came back to finishing the 2x2s. Sometimes it's just good to switch gears. Once the 2x2 two two framing was up, I could cut some more welded wire fencing to staple into all of these sections. Since they weren't all perfectly square, since the ground was kind of sloping, I cut these a little big, stapled them on, then trimmed a little as needed. For the spot where I added the raised beds already, this was kind of a pain because I had to cut the corners out. So again, I don't recommend adding the raised beds until after all of the framing and fencing is installed, which is actually this point right here. Once all the fencing was stapled on, this is where you can completely customize how you'd like to add the raised beds. We had already planted much of what we were growing, so these really aren't raised beds so much as just a wooden edging to separate the mulch from the pavers that I'll be adding later. But I lined the inside of the fence around the bottom with cedar fence pickets, and I simply cut these to fit and screw them into the bottom two by fours of the fence. I boxed in the grapes in their own sections already earlier, but I also assembled a U-shaped piece that ran down the sides and along the back of the fenced area. I used scrap two by twos to connect the corners and just kind of sistered pieces of fence pickets to connect two pieces together. You could also use ground stakes to help keep these in place and assemble these boxes however you'd like. 
So just to explain what's going on here, we're gonna put strawberries here and bushes along the back and then strawberries on the other side. So it's kind of like a U shape and then the grapevines are at the front. But we're also gonna put a box in the middle here and I just screwed together a cedar box with stakes on the corners so I can just hammer them in place where I want this box to go. And then everywhere in between all the boxes is gonna be pavers. In hindsight, driving the stakes at the corners first, then attaching the pieces around the stakes to make this box might have been a better option because my boards kind of split open at one of the corners as I drove it in the ground. But it is what it is. After this box was in, I went back and added weed barrier to this middle section, as you can see. Now I didn't do this to the entire space yet because we still have several things to plant. So I just added it to the middle here where the walkway will go. Then I layered on a few inches of paver base. This is basically small crushed rock and we used it because we bought it for another project that we ended up not doing. So this seemed like a good place to put some of it. We spread this out over the middle area and tried to smooth it out as best we could. Then I laid out some pavers. Pavers aren't really necessary, but I thought they were pretty. So I added them here. Full transparency, I didn't want to deal with cutting any of these and they were kind of pricey, so I just used them sparingly. Once they were laid out, I came back with more paver base rock and used it kind of like grout between tiles. I filled all the spaces and gaps and leveled everything out. This is definitely not how you do actual pavers, but again, we already had the rock and I needed to get rid of it somehow. This actually worked out really well, and since they're similar colors, it blends in nicely. Now, I'm not the gardener of the family, so I let Danny plant whatever he wanted to around the back and sides while I moved on to adding the gates onto the arbors to finish up the build. I kept the gates super simple. I just needed something to basically keep the animals out, especially Bubby. So I cut and assembled a simple frame from cedar 2x4s using pocket holes and exterior pocket hole screws. I made this gate frame one inch narrower than my arbor opening to give me about a half inch spacing on each side. To match the rest of the garden, I cut and stapled welded wire fencing over the opening on the two gates, then installed using heavy duty gate hinges. I used my phone as a shim to keep the gate off the ground while I installed it. Super professional. Then I added a simple gate latch to keep it closed. By this time, everything, at least for now, was planted in the garden and I filled the beds with mulch. And now we're ready to enjoy the literal fruits of our labor. <laughs> This looks so much nicer than what we already had out here, and this will hopefully help keep the deer out a lot better too. I'm really excited about how this garden turned out, and once the treated wood has had time to dry out a little, I'll go back before the winter and apply a stain and sealant to it to add a little more color and keep it looking nice until next season. I really hope you enjoyed watching this project come together. It's probably one of my all-time favorites, and I was really excited to share it. If you want to keep up with what's coming next, be sure to subscribe to the channel for the latest projects and plans. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and until next time, happy building!